I welcome each one of you, my fellow pilgrims, to our weekly Bible study. This is on the sixth Sabbath school lesson study in English. I welcome you. Before we pray and begin the lesson study, I have a humble request to pray for me. Today, I and my daughter Selina are uh, traveling from Pune to Hyderabad city. So, Friday evening, I'm going to preach in uh, our church, Kokodpalli Church. Pastor is Pastor Chittu Babu. And also on uh, Sabbath, I'm going to preach in the Hyderabad English, Central English Church. Pastor is Pastor Jeevan Sudhir. So pray for me. If any one of you have time, you can uh, see that link which we will provide on the Facebook, my Facebook so that you can uh, also join if you have time. But I encourage each one of you, join your local church after worship is over, then you can join their YouTube to watch the message in your leisure time. Please pray for me and the travel to go and to come back. Let's pause for prayer. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your abundant love and your goodness for each one of us and our families and our congregations. Speak to each one of us, Lord. Bless all of those who are sharing this message and this link with so many other people and help us to be a blessing for others. Fill us with your spirit so that we can understand about this great nation which you have established. Because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the title of our sixth lesson is What a Nation! What a Great Nation! Which is that uh, great nation? The nation of Israel. Why it was so great? Because it was God who founded that one. It was God who led them. It was God who was so close to them than any other nation on this earth from the beginning. That's why it was supposed to be such a great nation. Our memory text is found in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 8. Memory text is coming from Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 8. What a great nation, how such uh, laws, that means these are uh, divine laws and his divine statutes and the righteous judgments. God says, I set all of these laws for you. What for? So that they can be saved, they can prosper. It is God's intention, it's God's plan that his people should prosper. His people should be in the limelight, his people should be safe. That's why God gave all of these divine laws. Had they followed those laws, had they followed those divine judgments or the righteous judgments which God has given to them, they could have been the greatest nation on this earth. But God gave us the promise by saying, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, verse 13 and 14, if you keep these laws, you'll be the head, not the tail. Surely, it was God's plan that Israelites, the nation of Israel must be the head, not the tail. But the first three chapters of the book of Deuteronomy, first three chapters, give us a very, very disappointing picture because these three ch chapters are a summary of what they have done in the last 40 years because they were at the borders of Canaan. From the time they came out of Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea. What happened during these 40 years? Uh, Moses just gave a summary, but in that summary, they have miserably failed. They did not expect to the expectation of God who brought them and who made them as a nation. They have disappointed him. We have to learn that important spiritual lesson. When God called them out of uh, Egypt, when, they, when God delivered them, just they were only slaves. But God blessed them, prospered them. He made them as a kingdom of priests and kings as he promised them in Exodus chapter 19. What can we learn? Can you look back and see yourself and your family, how humble beginnings you have. You have so much of a humble beginnings, but God brought you up because of his love. But are we measuring up to the high standard of God? Are we bringing glory and honor to God or are we bringing disappointment and tears to our Savior? Why did I 
bring this person into this light? Is Jesus feeling that way or is Jesus proud of you and your family and your life on this earth in this ending of the end time? This is what we have to learn. So, this week's lesson is focusing on Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 to 10. Verses 1 to 10. First three chapters kind of a summary. The fourth chapter is just like a, a sermon. What happened from the beginning? Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1. It says, O Israelites, now, O Israelites, hear, O Israelites. That means hear the voice of God. God spoke through Moses. God told Moses, you have to repeat this laws because they are going to enter into the, my promised land. They have to be uh, uh, altogether a special people. That's why you just again repeat because their fathers, their forefathers, they heard them. I spoke to them my, by my voice directly at Mount Sinai. They did not obey. They disappointed me. At least this new generation, this young generation must live according to my standards, my statutes, my righteous judgments. That's why it says, O oh, Israelites, listen to my voice. And often in this chapter, listen or observe or follow or obey. These are the words which are repeated often in this chapter, chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. God said, do not add anything what I have said. That means do not add anything to his law or do not, do not remove anything. Don't add anything. Don't remove anything. Just you follow exactly whatever God gave. Why? Because God in his infinite loving kindness, infinite wisdom, infinite mercy, he gave these laws. So nothing you can alter from them and say, Oh, this is not suitable for me. This is not good for my family. Uh, this, uh, those days, uh, people in those olden days, this, uh, they did it. But uh, now I'm in the modern time. Don't doubt on that because God knows what is the best he gave. That's why God says, don't add anything. Because as human beings, sometimes we say, oh, this rule is uh, not really applicable. This rule is not really meaningful. Sometimes we feel that way. But God's laws, not like that. Don't add anything or don't remove anything. Don't remove anything. But what happened as the days went by, just only to keep the Sabbath, Jewish people made up or they made for themselves 613 rules, what to do, what not to do, what to do, what not to do. So, so many rules they have made how to keep the Sabbath and how not to break the Sabbath. But what we are trying to emphasize is God said, don't add anything, don't subtract anything. This is what again repeated in Revelation chapter 22 verse 18. God says, don't add anything to this prophecy. If you add anything, God will add to that person the seven last plagues. That means they will suffer and they'll be lost forever. If you remove anything from this book, it, this is particular about book of uh, Revelation, God will remove our name from the book of life. But God is telling here, this is quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse uh, 4. Or uh, sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2. Don't add anything, don't remove anything. And uh, John was quoting at the last uh, chapter of his book. That's why as God's people, whatever God says, small things, big things, we must obey. We must abide by those rules and regulations, those laws, what we call the commandments. Commandments are only 10, but God uh, said some instructions, what to do, what not to do, what to eat, what not to eat. For example, Leviticus chapter 11, God told which fish to eat, which fish not to eat, which animal to eat, which animal not to eat, which bird to eat, which bird not to eat. Oh, some people who are uh, addicted to some fish or some animal flesh, some bird, then they say, oh, this is for Israel, it's not for me, we are Christians. So they want to eat that, they eat that one. So sometimes what we do is, we compromise. What we like, we say, ah, it's good. What we do not like, we say, oh, it's not for us, it is for those ancient people. We should not do that because God's last, God's standards, God's statutes, they are for every generation. As the days went by, as the days went by, Israelites did not obey God, they disappointed God by doing what? 
they worship the idols god told strictly clearly don't worship anything in the sky or on the earth under the earth don't make any graven image and uh, uh, prostrate before it that means don't worship it but within 40 days you remember at mount sinai they already made a golden calf and they danced around it they worshiped it this is exodus uh, uh, chapter 32 then as the days went by in the history of uh, israelites often they have fallen into this sin of idol worship you can read through book of judges often yes we read that they have fallen into that sin of idol worship and adultery and other forms of sin and we are told matthew chapter 15 was 1 to 9 matthew chapter 15 was 1 to 9 you read this carefully prayerfully which says the pharisees and sadducees and the scribes they asked a question they wanted to somehow criticize jesus by saying master or rabbi that means teacher, why your disciples are eating food without washing your hands? Our elders have established the tradition, before eating food, we must wash our hands. Why they are not washing their hands? Surely, washing hand is good, that is a good uh, uh, health practice, but it was not given by God. But they are giving more importance to the rule which they have set up for themselves, washing hands. But Jesus questioned them. Jesus put them on the spot by saying, saying, now you answer me. The fifth commandment says, honor your father and mother so that you can live long on this earth. But what did they do in the days of Jesus? Any son and uh, uh, to comes to the elders of the village and say, all of my property or all of my whatever I'm earning, in my business or in my uh, or agriculture or in my day-to-day -day, uh, work, whatever I'm earning, I'm giving everything to that temple. If they said that or if any son said that in front of the village elders, I'm uh, offering everything to the temple, then the village uh, elders said, you need not to be under the obligation to take care of your old parent. You need not to feed them. You need not to take care of them. You need not to provide any medicine if they get sick. You need not to provide any food for them when they're old. I know if it is our modern time, many of them are working and lifelong. And after that, they get at least little pension in their old age. But in the olden days, they only worked on the farm, agricultural laborers. Then they have no pension. Then how to live? But the son says, I have uh, offered everything to the temple. They said, oh, offering to the temple is a great thing. So he need not to be under the obligation of taking care of his father and mother, giving them food and giving them some medicine when they get sick and all of that. So by doing like that one, surely whether uh, they really uh, paid all of that, uh, whatever the income they got to the temple or not, it was not uh, recorded. Surely many of them just only made that promise in front of everybody, but they were not faithful in offering to the temple whatever the profit they got. They were not uh, faithful. But they got away from this big commandment, important commandment, honor your father and mother. And when Jesus questioned that, they did not answer. They could not answer. They are giving more importance to washing the hands than following the and obeying the commandment of God to take care of the parents and honor the parents. Honor means it's not just bringing some uh, uh, one garland and honoring them or one shawl and uh, uh, honoring them once in a year on the Father's Day or the Mother's Day, not like that. But take care of them, provide them food, take care of them in their old age, provide uh, uh, all the necessities for them. This is what God wanted. So they did not follow this one and they somehow got away, got around by not obeying the commandment of God. They made their own rules. And uh, today also, majority of the Christians, they say, oh, these laws are not for us. Oh, Ten Commandments not needed. That is for Israelites. Uh, if you have Jesus, that is enough. If I believe in Jesus, that is enough. No need to keep the commandments. Commandments are uh, nailed to the cross. Somehow, they're using this lame excuse and trying not to give any importance to the commandments. But Deuteronomy, read often it says, obey the commandments, keep the commandments, repeatedly several times it is said. But some people may say, oh, that was for the Israelites, not for us today, the modern uh, spiritual Israelites, the Christians living in the end of the, end, end of the world. It's not for us, they say. But what did Jesus say? This is what people are saying. 
But what did Jesus say? John chapter 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus is telling, keep my commandments. People are telling or some preachers are telling, oh, no need of commandments. Whom do you believe? Whom do you obey? Should we obey Jesus or these human beings who are saying in their uh, lack of understanding, no need to keep the commandments. We need to keep the commandments because if you love me, keep my commandments. So, and uh, sometimes some uh, Christians give a, a lame excuse by saying, I know the commandments, I know about the uh, now seventh day is the day of worship, but uh, from my grandfather time, my father, my grandfather and all uh, uh, did not uh, keep the Sabbath day, only uh, kept the resurrection day. That's why we got used to this one. Yes, it is in the Bible uh, that you should, uh, Jesus honored or uh, observed a, a Sabbath and we must do that one also. But uh, somehow uh, I got used to this uh, custom or tradition of worshiping on uh, Sunday. So I'm not able to come out. Sometimes people give that kind of a lame excuse. But is the tradition which comes from father or grandfather is more important or the words and the commandments which come from God important? We have to choose what to do, to whom to give more importance. Then the problem of Israelites at a place called Baal Peor, this is just uh, close to the border of uh, promised land, the Canaan. It is uh, in uh, Moab those days. Today it's called Jordan. It is close to the Jordan River. And uh, if, if uh, somebody can climb a, a mountain or a little high hill, then they can see uh, Canaan, the land of Canaan from this Moab. It's so close. It's in the borders. But at that place, Satan seduced them. They have fallen into a great sin, Israelites. It was actually fabricated, pre-planned by king of Moab and that Balaam the prophet. They, uh, they planned that one, pre-planned. It was a kind of a conspiracy. They planned. They invited all the young men of Israelites. Of course, all the Israelites, they were below 40. And it looks as though the Moabite and Midianite young ladies invited them for a sacrifice. And since they were looking attractive, beautiful, they accepted their invitation. They went. When they went, they were singing and dancing. Oh, within no time, all of these young people also sucked into the dancing because they were playing music and singing and dancing. They also joined them as a part of their practice, because it was the practice of many, many heathen festivals in those days, that singing, dancing, and also part of it is also to dance a little longer, drinking alcohol. For them, it is not bad, it is not sin. They drink alcohol. Once they're drinking, dancing, drinking alcohol, dancing and singing, and also they have a good food, non-veg food, everything, really works together to lead them, seduce them into sexual sin, which we call adultery. Sure, they fell into adultery, but it was pre-planned to seduce them. It was the plan of Satan. We must learn that important lesson. Where they were? At the border of Canaan, where we are today, in the borders of heavenly Canaan. Jesus is about to come back. Jesus is coming sooner than what we are expecting. Satan is also trying the same trick today in the name of some birthday of some friend, some marriage party of someone or some Christmas party or some New Year's party, New Year party. Oh, singing, dancing, drinking, which is pushing people into adultery. This is what they have done. This is what they have done. I want you to read Numbers chapter 25, 1 to 15, the whole chapter, Numbers chapter 25 how they have fallen into that sin. And there was a young man, his name was Zimri. He was the son of a leader. He was the son of a leader of Simeonites, Simeonites or a, a, a tribe of Simeon. His uh, daddy was a, a leader. And he brought one young lady. Her name is uh, also mentioned here as Cosby. Cosby. This is in uh, Numbers chapter 25. And she was also the daughter of a leader of uh, Midianites. See, that son of a, 
a leader of Jewish people or Israelites and the daughter of a, a leader among the Midianites. Both of them open sin. And Moses was there, Joshua and Aaron and all the elders were there. Both of them came in the broad daylight to commit adultery in their tent. See, open sin. Why? They were not, uh, let us say, cautious or uh, uh, f at least have the fear of the elders because they were under the influence of alcohol. So, they are uh, totally given up to the debased practice. Satan controlled them through this alcohol and the feeling of adultery. Satan can exploit anyone because of that what happened that day. God was angry and God brought a plague. 24,000 young people perished that day. 24,000 young people perished that day, died. Because of that, they participated in the sacrifice and eating the food offered to idols. They also participated in drinking, dancing, ended up in adultery. 24,000 people, can you imagine? In the borders of Canaan, just maybe some uh, Bible... Uh, uh, pundits or Bible scholars say it's only about seven miles, that's all. The border. They could have crossed into promised land. They lost themselves because they did not cling to God. They deviated from God. That's why we are told cling to God, cleave to God, cleave to God. We are told in Genesis chapter 2, verse 14, and Jesus told Adam and Eve, you have to be together, cleave to each other, cleave to each other. And also we are told in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 4, those people who cleave to God, that means who were attached to God, they lived. But those who deviated from God, those who left God, they perished in that great sin, 24,000 people. That's why as God's people living in these last days, we are told in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20. Deut Deuteronomy, a second text is 11, verse 22. Then third text is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 20. Then the fourth one is Deuteronomy 4.4. 4. Those, who, those, who uh, those who stayed with God, stuck to God, so to speak, cleaved unto God, cleaved to God, they lived. Those who left God, they perished. This is the lesson we have to learn. To be say, on the safe side, cleave to God, follow His commandments, follow His statutes, Obey all of his rules and regulations. Then you will be saved. You will be saved in his eternal kingdom. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. But thank God. God has a promise for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1, 3, 13. It says, now, uh, you will not uh, receive any temptation which is beyond human ability. God allows some temptation, but along with the temptation, He will also provide a way out, an escape, a way to escape that problem, that suffering, that sin. God will provide. That's why if you stick to God, if you stay close to God, God will uh, provide a way out. But this great nation, this great nation, we can read about this one in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 to 9. And as we said, why it was so great? Because God founded this nation. Why it was so great? Because God was so close to them and led them. He never did that one to any other nation. That's why it is a great nation. And also he gave them the laws and his uh, uh, righteous judgments. He gave them rules and regulations, what to do, what not to do. That's why it was the greatest nation. And uh, they were supposed to be the head, not the tail in the whole world for all the other nations. But God had a role for them. God had a role for them to be an example to all the other nations, to light unto all the surrounding nations. By following his rules and regulations, the commandments and all of those righteous judgments, they could have been the best in the whole world. Spiritually as well as physically, they could have been best. But they have disappointed God. We have to learn that also. God has brought you up. God has blessed you. God has given you this opportunity, whatever you have, whatever you are. But do you disappoint God or do you bring glory and honor to, your God, honor to God? We have to bring glory and honor to God in what we say, what we eat, what we drink. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Do it for the glory of God. But in spite of their failures, 
still we see in the world today at least that a remnants of the blessing of God is still with the Jewish people. It is said so far from 1905, 1905, this Nobel Award, Nobel Award is awarded to or given to 900 different people in various uh, categories of their best achievement. 900 people. Out of those 900 people, 210 people were Jews. Can you imagine? 210 people are Jews. Had they been faithful, <laughs> I can imagine all of them would have been the Jewish people. But still, some of them who are faithful, God's blessing is still with them. But they should have been the in every aspect, spiritually, physically, uh, scientifically, intellectually, you name any, any area, they should have been the best. They should be the head, not the tail. And also, it is also said that a smallest video camera which they use for surgeries of heart or lung or any uh, organ in the stomach, they use smallest video camera for in the surgeries in the uh, operation theater. That was invented by a Jew. Even they say uh, polio vaccination was also those days uh, now discovered or uh, developed by a Jew. I know they did many, many uh, great uh, contributions to the world. But not only physical contribution, scientific contribution, they should be the spiritual contribution they should have made to the whole world because the whole world was pushed into ignorance of the true God, pushed into idol idol worship pushed into ignorance of the true god and it was god's plan that the israelites must bring that light to the nations they should be light unto the nations but often they have fallen into abomination but each time when they have fallen into some abomination god taught them a tough lesson of handing them over to some oppression some punishment so that God wanted to bring them back, restore them. God is still showing his love and his grace and mercy even in that punishment so that he wanted them to come back. Lastly, wisdom and understanding. In which way they have to show wisdom and understanding? In following the standards of God, following the commandments of God, following the rules and regulations of God, following the righteous judgments of God. They have to show wisdom and understanding. This is what is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6 says, Therefore, be careful to observe, be careful to observe all the laws, all the statutes, all the righteous judgment. But God says, not your own understanding, not your own understanding, but the understanding which God has given. So, had they followed with wisdom and understanding, whatever the laws and the righteous judgments, what they have fallen, or what God has given to them, what all the righteous laws and the righteous judgments, what God has given to them, had they followed it, and all the other heathen nations, they would have looked upon them. Oh, these people are so great, so mighty, so wonderful. How did they get to this level? How did they get to this place? How they are uh, so outstanding? They would have come and inquired. They would have come to know. It's because of their God. It is because they're following the laws and the judgments of God who gave them. They would have come to know the true God. So they are supposed to be witnesses to the whole world. Witnesses about the love of God, greatness of God, mercy of God, and His righteousness, and also His uh, salvation which is free in Him. So Israelites, God wanted them to be ambassadors or the missionaries for Him throughout the world to win back all the fallen nations into ignorance of the true God. God wanted to use them. But often they disappointed God. They brought tears to God. What about each one of us? God gave us this light, light of Jesus. Are we sharing it with others? These Israelites, by the time of Jesus, they did not even share this salvation light with the immediate neighbors like Samaritans, Moabites, Philistines, they did not even share. It's like uh, they now covered up the light and they hid the light. They did not want to share with anyone. In fact, they said, all the others are not worthy of salvation. 
They are dogs, they said. Only salvation is only for Jews. Till today, most of them believe salvation is only for Jews. Heaven is only for Jews. Sometimes, some of us also have that uh, same feeling and say, Oh, salvation is only for us. Salvation is only for our church. Sometimes we have that kind of a feeling. But so, God is so gracious. Whoever obeys him, observes his laws carefully and follows his righteous judgments, sure, God is coming to take them to heaven. He will give them eternal life. That's why God wanted these people to be missionaries to the whole world, light unto the Gentiles. That's why we are told in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, 14, 15, and 16. 13, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Be, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its uh, saltiness, then it, that's good for nothing. It should be thrown out. Likewise, you are the light of the world. You are supposed to share this light, give this light to light of Jesus, light of salvation. Because Jesus is the light of the world. We have to give this light to all the people. But often what happened, the Jewish people did not share that light with others. What about us? Are we sharing this light? Maybe your immediate neighbor or other people in your street. They are still in darkness. They are still in heathenism. Did you try to reach them, share this light of Jesus? How Jesus is loving you, how Jesus is helping you, how Jesus is blessing you, how Jesus led you through and your family during this uh, tough time of Corona, how God provided. Did you share any time with those people? This is what we need to do as God's people. Share this light with others so that they can be also blessed. That's why God's intention was the Israelites must be his missionaries, his ambassadors, his light bearers, but they have failed. That should not happen to us. Jesus is counting on each one of us until and unless this gospel is preached as a testimony, he's not going to come back a second time. But this responsibility is for all of us. We have to share this good news, share this salvation message, say, share this one that Jesus is coming sooner to take, sooner than what you are expecting uh, uh, to take us home to be with him. Are you willing to share this good news? In order to do that, what we have to do is definitely listen to him, hear his voice, hear his words, keep his commandments, keep his statutes, so that you'll be the head, not the tail. You'll be a blessing to others. You'll be a blessing to yourself and blessing to others by obeying God and following his commandments, following his light. May the Lord bless each one of us so that we are, God chose us to be priests, a kingdom of priests and kings as God chose Israelites, but they failed. We should not fail God in these last days. What a great nation. We belong to the nation of Jesus and nation of saved people, redeem, uh, people who are redeemed by his blood. This is what is our opportunity. May the Lord bless each one of us to live as his sons and daughters, bringing glory and honor to God in this ending of the end time. If that is your decision, join with me. I want to pray. Before I pray, I want to thank each one of you. Uh, a number of you are taking your precious time to share this message with others and also sharing this link with others. God bless you. And also, as I said in the beginning, pray for me and my daughter. We are traveling today to go to Hyderabad. We will be there. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Sunday evening again, we are going to take return journey to come back to Pune. And uh, during this time of uh, my stay in Hyderabad, I have to uh, preach in Kokodpalli, our church, and also Hyderabad church on uh, Sabbath uh, divine service and uh, other uh, uh, spiritual uh, meetings. Pray so that God will protect me and bring me back safely. Thank you. And if you need that link, uh, we will provide that one on my Facebook. And you can uh, look for that one if you need that one. Thank you. God be with you. God bless you. Let's uh, conclude our lesson study with a prayer. Loving Father, we want to thank you so much for your goodness and your love and your uh, kindness towards each one of us. Though we are not worthy, like those Israelites, you have picked us from a humble beginning. You made us so important for your glory. Often we are failing you. We are disappointing you. Lord, forgive us and help us so that we can obey your 
commandments, obey your statutes, obey your righteous judgments, and live as your sons and daughters to bring glory and honor to you. And help us to be salt of this earth. Help us to be the light to the people around us. And bless those who are uh, sharing this message with others. Take care of all of us and our needs. And take care of me this uh, weekend for your glory and honor in uh, Hyderabad city. Lord, we need your special blessing. Continue to take care of us and protect us so that we can join in the seventh lesson study so that we can learn some more wonderful things. Because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brothers and sisters. God be with you until we meet again in the seventh lesson study. God bless you. Thank you.